Hello, 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 everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is our review for Team Mom. This is C- Team Mom 2. Uh, season 8, the part 2 of the reunion. I think I feel like I forgot about Team Mom 2. I feel like I haven't reviewed it in like a long time. I don't know why. Um, I also feel like it wasn't a need for a part 2, really. I mean, had it not been for the fight... It could have been a one-part reunion. I don't think, truth be told. If you have not done so already, please take a moment to subscribe to my channel, okay? And become an active subscriber. This meaning to watch the videos, share my videos, comment, you know, uh, uh, comment, like, share. Yeah, that's what it is. And then also do not forget to hit the notification button because I, that lets you know. Why well, am I getting sunside? That lets you know when I have new videos up. Lord, it's 2.30 in the morning. I'm tripping. Anyway, um, I also have my hoodies available in this spring, not spring, what is wrong with me? Fall is coming up and I have my, you know, worry about the business that pays you hoodies that are available on my Teespring website. The link to get that is in the description box below this video. I also have my t-shirts on there and also my mug. So go ahead, check out the website, order some, you know what I'm saying, treat yourself and be a supporter of me. Thank you very much. So, um... This reunion did not give me much. We do know there's going to be another season of the show simply because Dr. Drew said he hopes that Janelle will come back next time um, to do the reunion, which makes me think, okay, it must be another season coming on. A lot of people have been asking me about that Pretty Little Mama show. Is that supposedly going to replace Team Mom? I doubt it. Am I going to re- re- um, review Pretty Little Mamas? I don't know. I have my DVR set to record the first episode. It looks to the hills it's, it looks like it's fake TV if it's a fake TV type of thing I'm not going to review it like I need to see these girls have babies like I need to see them birth some babies for me to be like okay it's a real show and not you know faking as if these girls got these kids and it's a whole thing so I have to see I don't know um, I've seen a couple of reviews and it look it reminds me of the hills of one, it just and I'm not Laguana Beach. I'm not here for it. I never have liked those kind of shows from MTV. The most I've ever liked was The Real World or Road Rules. So that's kind of it. Uh, and I did watch Jersey Shore. Um, but yeah, if Pretty Little Mamas is a scripted type show, if it's not a real reality show, I doubt very highly that I will be reviewing it. Uh, but I won't know until after I watch episode one. And even when I watch episode one, I'm not taking any notes. So. Um, I might not even review it until, like, Saturday to see what I'm going to do. Anyway, I'm just one of the channels that y'all won't be in my comment section asking me, is you going to review? Is it? So you have your answers. Um, so, we see Chelsea does her thing through, via video. You know, she left the whole thing after the whole melee thing with um, Kale and Brianna. And she said she left because I did not like being in the middle of a fight, you know, I was sitting there, pregnant belly and all, and the whole fight broke out, so I wasn't for that bullshit, I came home, because guess what, I'm a real ass person, her thing was pretty easy, you know, they talked about how, you know, basically Adam is still the same, he's only able to see Aubrey, um, at the, like, the visitation center or whatever, but he does not go there often, um, she still sees her grandparents and everything, um, he went to her school maybe, like, once or twice for, like, the lunch thing that he can that he can have there so basically nothing has changed like I, nothing's different i don't you know i'm i'm like okay you know she brings up how she feels like the reason she was even with him in the, in the beginning was because she had i'm like i keep forgetting my air conditioners on but it's very hot and humid today even at 2 30 in the morning so whatever but anyway she brings up how she feels like you know she had very low self-esteem back in the day and that's why she was even with Adam trying to be with him because her her self-esteem was not 
where it should be and that's why she kept trying to make it work she says but she's really happy that she grew out of that phase and that she's now happily married in a healthy relationship you know she got she's t- total of three kids now when she's pregnant so well you know three um and how she's happy that aubrey has a positive male father figure in her life you know she brings up how aubrey does not mention adam much she does not ask many questions and i'm I, i'm not surprised that she doesn't because i think for aubrey i'm like is it aubrey or audrey aubrey i work with someone named audrey um for aubrey i think for Ar- aubrey is normal she's never really had a stable relationship with her father like he's never really been around enough for her to miss him um and so with the sad honestly but at the same time it's great that she seems to not be affected by it so that's a good thing because some kids can be affected by that by their by their their bio father not being around but it's a good thing that he got because i think it's different when your dad is around for a while and then goes away and you're confused versus what he never really was around so you know i'm used to it like so it kind of makes sense um but you know that was her whole thing kudos i'm leah Leah was easy too. First of all, Leah has lip fillers, and you can't tell me she does not. Leah has always had very thin lips. Um, from back, she's never had like plump lips, and her lips, her lips were, was as plump as mine. Okay, and I have naturally plump lips. I'm looking like her lips are very plump. And when she was talking a little bit, they didn't move as much as they usually do. I used to when I talk, my mouth moves all the way around. But um, when she was talking, her mouth was her lips were not moving as well. The difference between her stuff and like like fair stuff leah's look good like she didn't overdo it like it's n- and it's not too noticeable i only noticed it because i have to look up and i was i was laying on my couch from the side so the angle of the tv was like weird where i saw her lips i'm looking like oh her lips are plump i'm like she didn't use to have plump lips i'm like she got some lip fillers or she got her lips plumped up but it's cute I, she shouldn't change nothing else. Like, don't add no more. You don't say nothing away. It's very nice looking, but she got her lips done in one way or the other. Um, they talk about how great of a job her and Corey are doing with the kids. You know, how their daughter with a disability is realizing more and more and more that she can't do all the things she used to be able to do. How she has to kind of calm down sometimes. How, she, how she's going to need more assistance in doing things. And she's coming to that realization. But overall, she's doing really well. So that's always good. Um, you know, he brings up how they're doing much better than they used to. Because when she first was diagnosed, both Leah and Corey was both kind of like not wanting to accept it. And now they have fully um, accepted that she has muscular dystrophy she would need this kind of assistance and as she gets older the, the the disorder will progress and they just have to kind of you know go along with it because the the form that she has is so new and not you know it's not around not around it's not it hasn't been like um researched a lot like not a lot of people have it so they're kind of just going with the flow of what happened so that was kind of cool um you know we see Corey via video chat because of course Corey is Corey had been there in person in years i mean at least the past two three seasons um so he of course this is a video he's saying to how you know him and they working with the girl and the girls are doing good or whatnot um brings up how him and miranda are cel- about to celebrate five years of marriage because we don't see miranda anymore at all like she's never um around but you know he's like we're fine we're happy we'll, we'll be you know going on five years so that was what it was um, we see they talk to Kale and Leah together. At this point, I'm, I'm like, okay, y'all just making up shit at this point. You know, they bring up how, oh, yeah, y'all was hanging out or whatever. That was really different to see. And they both say, well, no, we, like, hang out here and there in real life. The crew, like, it just never gets filmed. Like, it's the first time they actually filmed it. But we've hung out with each other. At each- Why am I, like, I feel like I'm, like, just like an octopus or some shit. I don't know. Anyway, she brings up how they have hung out together before, hung out at each other's houses, but, you know, it just wasn't on, on film this time, and hopefully the, they will shoot more of them kind of hanging out. I think that's a great idea. As long as them hanging out does not include them hanging out and talking shit about the other cast, I'm fine with it. I think it would be cool to see them kind of hanging out, um, maybe seeing their kids interact a little bit. Um, just do things that people with kids do, you know, you have little mommy groups or whatever. So... You know, they bring up how they kind of went through the same thing in one way or the other. How they both were with, you know, how they were with Corey 
and Joe and broke up at around the same time. How they both kind of then started dating Javi and Jeremy around the same time. And, you know, then they ended up both being single at the same time. So they kind of going through the same thing and that kind of bonded them a little bit more. And, you know, what I'm saying it was, it was what it was. You know, Kale said how she isn't dating yet, but she will eventually. And then Leah is dating a man who is 39 years old. She is 26. She at first lied and said he was, he was 35, but they kept asking her, excuse me, if he's over 40. No, he's not over 40. He's, he's 35. And he's like, well, no, he's really, you know, 39. So I'm like, well, he's at 40, you know, whatever. And she's 26. But however, you know, Leah, like, I think it's great. You know what I'm saying? He's, he has his own thing. Like, he, he's he's established. Well, I hope so at 39. I hope she wasn't dating a 39 year old, like, struggling Walmart worker. Okay? Not saying anything wrong with being a struggling Walmart worker. But I would not want to date a man at 39 struggling at Walmart. Um,. I just wouldn't. I, I, no tea, no shade. Anyway, um, but again, Leah acts older sometimes. I think Leah's gotten her life together, and which is very, very good. They talked about that a little bit earlier, too. Um, she seems more self-aware and more self-confident, less spacey. You know what I'm saying? I think whatever them pills they had her on before... That she was addicted to, you know, it's all our system. So it's cute for her to be saying, like, yes, I'm dating someone. Um, so I'm guessing we may see that a little bit on the next season if they're still dating at that point in time. Um, they then have Javi come on. Um, Javi, <sighs> he brought up how he does not condone the fighting, how he did not know what the whole fighting thing was. He did not know anyone was coming there to fight, and how he just kind of didn't see that being a good thing at all you know he brings up how for him you know he wasn't trying to cause beef between Kale and Rihanna and like you had to have known some shit was gonna happen and then he said well yeah but no I didn't really think it would be that bad or whatever I didn't think we'd go as far as it did I was just you know having fun living life you know me and Brianna just liked each other, was having fun, and then things just kind of happened or whatever. Um, they then asked him about the whole proposal situation, saying that Brianna was saying how she never really... You know, they asked him, like, how did he propose or something, and he said how he never really proposed. He said he kind of pulled the ring out and gave it to her, but it wasn't an official proposal. And then Nessa was like, well, she said that, you know, you proposed and she turned it down. He was like, well, that's what she wanted to say. You know, for her, that's fine. He like, but I gave her the ring. I did not really propose. She wore it, you know, out a couple times. She took a picture of it and sent it to her friends or whatever. So, she did have the ring and then I took it back. So, you know, that's what it was. Um, at this point, I give zero fucks. You know what I'm saying? Zero times zero equals how many fucks I give. And then, um... Dr. Drew brings up how people call him shady and how he's a manipulator and how, you know, he, he do, does whatever. He like, well, you know, no, I'm not, I don't think I'm shady. He brings up how, you know what I'm saying, me and Kel broke up. We had the whole divorce thing. You know what I'm saying? I was around, you know what I'm saying, thotting and bopping or whatnot, whatever. I then kind of got with Brianna. Me and her were thotting and bopping together. Then we broke up and then Kel kind of came back around. Me and her were thotting and bopping together. And then, you know, we stopped messing around. And then I was just single doing things. Um, he, you know, Nessa then asked about, well, what about the girl who you told Brianna that was ready to move to Delaware? He said, oh, well, that's actually my girlfriend now who I'm with now. And that girl is pregnant. Um, Drew said, I don't think he's shady. I think he just likes love. He can't be alone. I agree. I think, I agree. I do. Javi don't look to be with somebody just to fuck around. Javi be trying to like be with a bitch. Like he wants to like be with you forever. Like if he likes you, he love you. He wants like let's be committed. That's been a whole committed relationship. Like and that's a good and a bad thing. Meaning at times he moves too fast. And he moves so fast he looks like he's been a little shady motherfucker. But in real life he just like he want to be in relationships with whoever. So he was still in love with Kale, and him and Kale was still doing whatever. You know, he liked Brianna. They were doing, he was just all around trying to find who can I be in a whole full-fledged relationship with. And whoever I can at, at that time, that's who I'm going to be with. Now, he was still an asshole, in my opinion, for stringing along Kale and Brianna at the same time. And not telling either of them he was trying to just find the love of his life or whatever. 
But I don't think it was complete full shade. I think he was just on like, who can I be with? Okay. And then when Kale didn't work out and then Brianna didn't work out, he had his third choice, which is his current girlfriend's baby mama. Um, and it was what it was. I, you know, I, whatever. They then have Kale and Javi talk, basically. And, you know, she brings up how, you know, people say that, you know, um, I don't allow him to move on because I'll, I butt in or whatever. She's like, no, I just see shit for what it is and I talk about it. I saw the bullshit with Brianna coming and I spoke up about it. So it seemed as if I'm being shady, but I'm really not. I mean, you are. You are. It's in the way you do it, Kale. You can't act like it isn't. Um, she also brings up how, you know, he is a manipulator. And it's a thing to where when I'm in your presence, Javi, I, I forget that I hate you because of what you do. What I like that she said was, I still feel like, um, what, did she say it or did he, either, I can't remember if Kale said it or maybe Dr. Drew said it. One of them said they feel like he doesn't purposely do it. Kale said, even if he, I do know Kale did say, even if he doesn't realize he's doing it, he's still doing it for his benefit. I think Dr. Drew was saying how, yeah, he might do things because he feels like he's making things better. And then Kale said, yeah, but he still does it to his benefit. So he could be subconsciously doing things, but it's very fucking manipulative. I like how she kind of kind of explained that. And he kind of said, you know, well, that might be right. I don't even realize I'm doing it until I'm doing it. And then I kind of use it, use it to my advantage. You know what it is. Um, they admit they had sex together within the past six months of when this reunion was aired, um, well recorded. Um, and that was around the time the podcast stuff happened, around the time him and Brianna was off slash on, you know, they bring up how Brianna don't know that they stuff together around that time. But at this current time, and you know, on what's today, the 28th of August, we give zero fucks. Why? Because it all has happened. He has someone else pregnant. I'm pretty sure by now. Rihanna fucking somebody else. I'm pretty sure by now. Kale fucking somebody else. So we give, you know, not a lot of fucks to give. Um, they did ask, well, who, like, who initiated it? And he said, she did. She did. Like, you know, I was at the house and she said, let's go upstairs. And we went upstairs and we had sex. I was like, well, you know, come upstairs all the time don't mean let's have sex. Unless they say, come upstairs, let's do it. Like, that do mean let's have sex. But, you know, she didn't deny that she, um, I can't have sex with a person I hate on that level. Like, I have to still want you, even if I hate you. And she always would act as if she don't want him. So, to me, that means y'all do have that weird thing where y'all constantly, one of y'all want to fuck the other one. And then it just depends on who act on it. But, you know, whatever. And they're going to just be fine hating each other and loving each other and living separately and being co-parents. And we'll see that shit play out on the next season. Um, Barb and Nathan was on here together. A weird pair. Weird, weird pair. You know, it's weird. They even brought up how it was weird to see them two kind of working together um, to, to get the kids away from Janelle. And then Rob says, well, the way that we kind of worked out our issues was me and his mom we're meeting up for lunch and stuff and kind of, you know, doing things because of the kids, you know, because I have Jay, she has Kaiser. Um, and so because of that, Nathan would come around too. And he and Barb both said, we kind of both had to bury the hatchet, realize we, we both had said things and done things, you know, about each other before. Um, but what mattered now was that we're family and we need to get along. I mean, that's how adults act. I, I agree with that. And I always did feel like, with Nathan and Janelle, the issue was more Janelle and Barb less Nathan. I feel like at the end of the day, Nathan was always caught in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? It was the weird thing. I always felt like if they can just not include him, he won't have beef with Janelle or Barb. But he was always the person in the middle. And him and Barb would just bump heads or whatever at the same time. So with him and Janelle. Um, so, he br they also brought up, because they said how... Do you? Could you say you? They say that you will usually say how much bar I would be fucking with Janelle. Like, how do you like? What happened with that? He said, I felt like when I was in it, Janelle made me feel differently. Like she made me feel like Bar was a crazy person. He said, but I once I was out of it and I was on the outside looking in, I realized how much Janelle can push a person, but push a person's person's buttons, and it makes you blow up. And I just bit my tongue. And it makes you blow up to the point to where 
the audience doesn't see the nick, 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 pick, 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 pick. They just see tick, 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 boom, and the person explodes. Um, but they don't see how she kind of fucked with you to get to that point. He likes, I feel like I didn't see how much Janelle was fucking with her mama until I was outside looking like, oh, damn, she she is fucking with her. Like, because he, he said, I also felt like she made me a different person when I was with her. I call bullshit a little bit because you can't blame all that on Janelle. It was you too, Nathan. So I feel like because, again, he's no longer with her, he like, let me throw her up under the bus and let that, let that be that. Um, but again, it is what it is. You know, he brings up how he does not trust David or Janelle, basically how he wants one of them to take a, he said, I want one of them to take a drug test because I feel like if I can just be sure that at least one of them is clean and sober and in a right mind, I feel good. He like, but neither one of them are willing to, to take a drug test. He was like, um, and because I see like bruises on Kaiser, I want to talk to Janelle, but David won't let me talk to Janelle. So things are just kind of up in the air. And any bruise I see on him, I take a picture of it, even if it, even if it's a bruise that may not have came from being hit. Um, which is a good thing too, but it's the weird thing that everyone has this issue with how Janelle parents, but the kids, you know, at least Kaiser's, I'm like, how do you have pictures of bruises on the kid and he's still in the care of the, of the mama? I'm, I'm completely confused, but you know what I'm saying? Whatever. Um, and that was their whole thing basically. But him and Barb are still working together trying to get Kaiser out of there. Um, but I guess they're like, fuck that little girl. <laughs> Jesus Well I guess because that's David's daughter So they can't really do much about that Unless David and Janelle break up And then David If David and Janelle break up And then David Is like on Barb And Nathan's side Bitch I'm I would cackle so damn loud Oh Jesus Anyway Last but not least Janelle So Janelle talked to Dr. Drew Like alone He had to like fly to where she was She refused to fly To LA or Newark or wherever they, wherever they did the rest of the reunion at and you know her first comment about the whole season is you know what I'm saying I feel like the only reason Jace called me and David a piece of shit is because my mom does so he must have heard her say it so he said it to make her happy no he said it because that's how he felt like point blank period like girl bye you can't no he feels like you and David are pieces of shit and it's what it is. You know what I'm saying? Um, she brings up how, you know, people trying to take me down and they don't like David and everything my mom does is is to be against me. She's just trying to go against me or whatever. Whatever. Janelle, you are brainwashed. I'll say that. Um, Dr. Drew asked her about not giving Jace his medication, which we saw in one episode. She then says, well, that's not true. Like, I go with him to his counseling sessions. Like, we go every week. And the counselor thinks he's doing great or whatever. She thinks everything's fine. And to me, that means the counselor know he should not be in your care full time. Okay, let's say, let's say that. If you're going with him every week, if the counselor felt that your house was better for him, she would let him go to you. And the reason she has not, because she knows that house is our goddamn house of horrors. Anyway, she brings up when she has some every other weekend... She does not give him his medications on Saturday because it makes him sick and it makes him like a zombie and he won't eat. She says, so I wait and give him some on Sunday. But I feel like if, why is it that only on Saturday he feels sick? So he won't be sick on Sunday? Like that confused me because I'm like, you said it as if only on a certain day he gets sick. No, if the pills make him sick, wouldn't he be sick every day? So if you waited, if you didn't give him the pill on that day, he will be sick the next day. But I don't know. I, I that part kind of confused me. Anyway, he then asked about the whole comments that David made about the LGBT community, um, or whatever. She like, look, he feels how he feels. Meaning, David do not like gay people. Okay, let's make that clear. He don't like gay, trans, um, lesbian. He does not like people. Period. Is what she said. When she said he said what he said, he just feels like he should not have said it in that way. Meaning, he don't regret what he said. He don't take back what he said. He wish he could say it some more, okay? And even though he ain't on Twitter, he's still at home thinking them same goddamn thoughts. Um, excuse me. So, and she said he also does not want his kids to be that way because he was raised, he was raised to basically be, um, against gay people. It, it, it is what it is. That's, that's, that's his thing. Um, when he asked her, what if your, one of your kids 
would turn out to be gay. Like he used those same derogatory remarks against his own children. He not like his own kids. And she said, well, he would still love them, but he was not. He would not agree with their lifestyle or whatever. Dave was a piece of shit, and I swear. You can't make anyone gay, but I like I, I need Janelle to be like gay for a day. I, I need I need this. I, I just <sighs> it's just upsetting when she's defending him when she, it seems like she know what's wrong because she's not agreeing with him. She just saying those that's how he feel and he you know what I'm saying. So I'm like she know what he said was wrong. She knows she wouldn't say it. And I don't see why she don't tell him, like, you need to fully apologize for saying that shit. And everyone has the right to feel how they feel. Because my thing is, you cannot agree with someone being gay without being rude, nasty, and despicable and speak down towards them. That's my issue. I think people feel like if they don't agree with someone being gay, they have to be rude and nasty about it and you don't you can say you know what i don't agree with that lifestyle but you know what i'm saying peace be on to you i have no issues with you and leave it at that but to speak negatively and be like oh you know it's this and this and this you an asshole you a whole asshole times 10. anyway um jesus will fix it lastly they speak about the whole road rage incident and janelle tried to play victim to the motherfucking tea she made me so upset okay why because it's clear cut white woman syndrome and i don't care if y'all get offended by that word it's a real thing as a black person when you as a white woman pull your gun chase somebody down or all this shit and then you want to play victim i can't do that i can't i cannot be on tv and, and, and be shown shown that i follow some strange man to his home and then ran over his fucking mailbox and then when he tried to block me in from leaving, I put my gun on him, and then I'm the victim. Bitch, how? Okay? Bitch, how? How does that happen? Okay? You know, they showed the whole clip. And Drew asked what happened. She then said, you know what I'm saying? I had PTSD after that incident. I couldn't leave my house for two weeks. Bitch, why? Why couldn't you leave your house? You were the aggressor. Okay? You played classic, let me be a white woman and cry my tears because I'm so scared. Why were you scared when you chased that man? He didn't chase you. He, it, now, had he chased her down and, and then she put her gun on him, she would have had every right to have PTSD, be terrified. She would have, she would have had every reason. She chased that man down. She put her gun out. She did that. She had no fucking reason to be scared and have any kind of PTSD. Bitch, people have PTSD for real reasons. That reason, what you said, is some, it's, it's a fucked up ass reason. I don't look. <sighs> Janelle made my blood boy when she said I had PTSD and I cannot leave my house. And played the victim. Oh, it made me so mad. You know what I'm saying? He asked her, well, did you think about Jace? getting hurt with you following him she then says no i didn't think about that at all all i thought about was um with him stopping in front of me jace almost his he almost got his head crushed into the, into the thing no he didn't jace was securely secured in that goddamn seatbelt what that man did by stopping in front of her was it fucked up absolutely we, we can't negate that that was a fucked up ass move but however Jace was perfectly okay and like Dr. Drew said if you were so scared for Jace you should have pulled over called the police and let them handle it what you did was you called the police as you followed that man home and you then put Jace in more harm's way bitch okay I get as a parent your first uh, priority is to protect your child but in this instance you put your child directly into harm's way directly into harm's way bitch is what you did. So you can't feed me that bullshit that line of I was so terrified for my son almost getting hurt. I followed a strange man home and pulled my gun on him in front of his fucking house. Bitch, girl, a bag of dick, suck them all. Okay, I can't take it. Anyway, when Dr. Drew say, Well, don't you think it would have been wiser when the police when we called nine one one and they were not aware that you were following him, that you should have just pulled over. She then said, that would not have made sense. If I would have pulled over, he would have gotten away. Bitch, you ain't the police, okay? Not at all. Then he asked her about why did she call Jace a liar when Jace told the truth about her pulling her gun. She then said, I did not want to get in trouble for what I did, so I told, I was mad that he said it 
on camera. Bitch, you did it on camera. You did it on camera. I didn't want him to say things and the police to hear what happened and I got in trouble for something that I did. Bitch, what? <sighs> Janelle is the worst form of a parent on the show that I've ever seen. Janelle is worse than Farrah. Simply because Janelle is willing to make Jace feel like a liar in order to make herself not get in trouble. Farrah asshole. And Farrah do dumb shit in, in front of her daughter all the time. But at the end of the day, she really don't lie to the daughter or make the daughter feel like she's a liar. What Janelle did with Jace, and when she sips, when she specifically said, "I did it because I did not want to get in trouble," and I told my mom what happened off camera, but I didn't want the police to know this. Bitch, it was all on camera. It was so. What you did was you committed a crime on camera. You then lied about it on camera to the police officers. You then lied on your fucking son on camera, and then off camera told your mom and the trooper. At this point in time, the damage is done. Janelle, I would never. My, Janelle could divorce David, find a cure to cancer, a cure hunger all over the world, give all the people a thousand million dollars to live off of. You know, it would no longer be home for people. It would be food for everybody. It would be a perfect world. I still would not like her. She could solve every problem that is facing the world. I still would not like her. I can't. Anyway, that was the whole review, people. I hope you guys liked it. Put your comments in the comment section. And at the end of the day, remember this. I said what I said. Okay? Bye. <laughs>